So, uh, good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to this uh, extra special session of the Indian Express E Explained. My name is Monojit Majumdar. I'm the editor of the Explained section of the Indian Express. I say this is extra special because we are honored to have with us this evening one of the biggest heroes of the coronavirus story, not just in India, but across the world. The Honorable Minister for Health, Social Justice and Women and Child Development, the Government of Kerala, Shrimati K.K. Shailaja. Shailaja, teacher, ma'am, welcome. Thank you for finding the time for the readers of the Indian Express. It's an honor and a privilege. Now, some of you uh, have attended these sessions before. Quickly, a short brand pitch. The Indian Express Explained is that part of the Indian Express's explanatory journalism project in which we go deeper than just the news itself. The idea is to understand the news, go beyond it rather than just report it. The background, the context and the big picture and in the context of the coronavirus crisis, who better than Shalaja Teacher to do that, to do that for us tonight. Our partners for this session of E Explained are presenting partner Federal Bank and associate partner Arya Vaidyashala Kotagal. Thank you very much. Speaking to Shailaja teacher will be my colleagues Abantika Ghosh and Liz Matthew. Abantika will open with a short presentation. There will then be about 45 minutes of explanatory conversation between Liz and Abantika and the Honorable Minister. After that, we will take some audience questions. Thank you very much. And over to you, Abhantika and Liz. Hello, everyone. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, we will start with a short presentation on why we are talking about Kerala and how the state has tackled uh, the corona uh, epidemic. So um, throughout today, we've been hearing the word landfall a lot. And Kerala happens to be the place in India where COVID-19, the landfall of COVID-19 happened. And this was way back on 30th January when the uh, infection was imported from Wuhan. And uh, this was one student and quickly followed by two others. So a very brief look at how Kerala has gone about uh, tackling the disease. Uh, so one of the pillars, as, as we've repeatedly been told, is a robust surveillance mechanism and rigorous contact tracing. Just to give a small example of the kind of contact tracing that was done, one of these three students, I remember very clearly, um, this person had, had taken a flight from Wuhan to Calcutta, then Calcutta to Bangalore, and taken uh, an auto. He's, he'd stayed in two hotels a cab, uh, a Kerala state road transport bus. And all of those people were eventually traced. If I, if I remember correctly, there were some 160 odd people in that single case who had, who had been contact traced. Then there, is, there, was a, there was a very robust public awareness campaign, the Break the Shame campaign, and uh, Kerala made uh, its citizens partners. Uh, Testing in Kerala has been very interesting because uh, it's it's not been that much in terms of volume. I, I believe Kerala till today has has done about just about ninety thousand tests, uh, but it's it's been very focused. Um, and it, the, the state also set an example in the kind of care it took of the elderly, of people with comorbidities, kids, the disadvantaged. Um, but I think what also helped Kerala along the way was the kind of maturity its health system already has. It's not for no reason that Kerala has some of the best human development indices in the country. So this is a, this is a brief look at the kind of testings that happened. Uh, this was all as per ICMR criteria. Uh, and then uh, they, they did some 1,000, 1,300 tests a day uh, till, till I think about a week or so back. This, these are from th those figures. Um, then there's the sentinel surveillance that's happening. The sentinel surveillance gives an idea about the kind of spread that the disease has had even beyond the contact tracing uh, that, that is being done. Uh, then the augmented testing happens. Um, another interesting thing is we all of us have, have seen those photos of the uh, rations that the Kerala government actually gave to everybody, not just the migrant workers whom they called guest workers and all all fam all families got those uh, the the rations and you know oil and all the essential items 
uh, so that that kind of really set Kerala apart. And then there was concurrent analysis of the epidemiological situation, uh, you know, looking at the evolving uh, scenario and planning accordingly. But but all all of that said, Kerala is right now I think going through a bit of a transition phase because. For quite a few days in May, there were zero cases. And then the migrant workers movement happened. So right now, Kerala's doubling time is actually uh, less than the national doubling time, which means the number of cases is growing faster. Uh, on, on, so on, as of yesterday, it had about 1,400 cases and 11 deaths. And of, of those 11 deaths, eight deaths have happened in the last uh, two weeks or so. So yes, there, there's... They've done well, but there are there. These are changing times for Kerala also. Um, and and to discuss all of that with us, uh, we have today the Kerala Health Minister, Madam K K Shelja. Welcome once more, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I want to express my thanks to Indian Express, and uh, I'm very happy to discuss with the very good team you arranged here. And as you mentioned uh, in your presentation, we have a very good system here, health system. Public health system is uh, very scientific here. Over the years, we early mentioned that 1957 onwards, we have a very good pri pri private uh, public health system here. And we started from 1957 because the state formed that year linguistic states after the independence India formed the states according to the language and uh, our state formed also at that time <clears throat> and uh, first elected government was in office in 1957 and that government made some basic changes in the society through the legislation and uh, activities <clears throat> The first thing was to make the people the owner of a piece of land. Up to that time, landlordism was here. And most of the people were tenants. They have no ownership on lands. And they were evicted at any time by the landlords. And they fought against the landlordism. And uh, great peasant and Kisan struggles occur here, occurred in that uh, 1940s, 50s, etc. When the government came to power, the chief minister was the was E.M. Shankaran Nambudri part, and that was a left government. And we have some legislations in the Kerala Legislative Assembly that we uh, passed an ordinance at once after the uh, oath taken and at once we passed a, an ordinance on giving stay on the you know, or prevent uh, the eviction of the poor people from the land and from that first step, step itself we are continuously taking uh, pro people or poor people activities in Kerala when they become the owner of a little piece of land, the poor people stand still and they have identity of their own. And there is reforms in the education sector and also health sector. Each and every village or panchayat, we have primary health centers now. And also in the secondary level, we have taluk and district hospitals. Also, we have medical colleges tertiary level, in tertiary level, and we started our work according to the decentralized planning from 1957 itself. When this government came to power in 2016, we analyzed what is the gap in the public health system, what is lacking. We have so many good results in the public health system. In many of the indices, we are in the forefront. We were in the forefront in 2016 also, but we analyzed what is the gap, what is lacking, what is the what is our duty in the contemporary days. 
and uh, in the in certain indices like uh, infant mortality rate kerala was in the forefront in indian states our infant mortality rate was 12 out of 1000 live birth in 2016 and uh, our maternal mortality rate was 67 out of 1 lakh birth that two indices are very good or it was first in india comparing to other states so ma'am would you say ma'am uh, ma'am would you say the it was the maturity of your health system really that helped you in the first leg of the covid battle the way you tackled covid Def, uh, yes yes because i am mentioning that and the last four years we are working hard to improve the primary health system and to educate people uh the health characters and their uh, uh, health seeking behavior we are educating them to improve their health and to prevent the disease to get immunity etc and when we tried hard and we got some good results in every indices especially our child mortality rate reduced to 7 from 12 within these four years and our maternal mortality rate also reduced to 46 from 67 i mentioned this here because the mode of work in kerala to express to explain the mode of work in kerala this is not an easy thing but we worked hard we organized everything uh, with the help of people with the help of local self government and the whole people Mm -hmm. society we have some good planning we have some planning according to the un's sustainable development goals also and we organized or he assembled the people to work for a good result in each and every part of health system and continuous training to our health workers from doctors to asha workers in the field and also we are trying to educating the people also ma'am uh, you you just mentioned about uh, the the role the self uh, you know the government played the at the panchayat raj you know kerala and uh, uh, you know even some uh, very few states have such very robust panchayat raj system so uh, do you do you think that it how far it has helped kerala to reach up to this level you know when it came to this fight against pandemic yes that uh, that is the uh, notable thing you know even though the panchayat raj nagarpalika act the amendments in our constitution passed but i think that most of the states this kind of democratic uh, government was not in grassroots level but in kerala we implemented that thing in a democratic way our local self governments are fully charged with power and also the distribution of money is also like that we are giving a good share of uh, our finance to the local self government and they are free to implement their novel projects the this freedom and activity helped our local self governments to participate in a democratic government in their own way and okay. we transferred this schools hospitals etc to local self governments our primary health centers are now under the panchayat local level panchayat they are well planned the with the well planned project and activities they are implementing so many novel projects in the primary health centers with the help of health department also it is now and it is now under health department but the local self government is the authority in that place and that phc is under the jurisdiction and they are planning for they are uh, giving uh, making some projects for that phc with the joint activity of health department and the local self government we are improving it for example we are converting our primary health center to family health centers when we examined in 
what is lacking in our health system we find out that after 1970s we forget the primary health system and are you we, talking about that ardram uh, scheme yes, ma'am i am talking about ardram project so, uh, what exactly you are planning with that ardram you know this i mean can you just little elaborate it the scheme yes i am not elaborating but uh, i can say some points because the slogan of ardram mission is to make the government hospitals public hospitals people friendly and also technologically modern and also to reduce the out of pocket expenditure of the poor people okay. to attract more people to the public sector poor people to the public sector when we examined in 2016 67% of the peoples were going to private sector for the treatment even though there is a primary health center in the panchayat grassroots level people are going to private sector for the treatment we examined this thoroughly and understood that our primary health centers are not in a proper way only one doctor was there and up, up to noon was their service and the physical structure also infrastructure also was not so good and we tried to convert these things when we convert primary health center to family health center we framed a master plan for the family health center we studied about the general practitioners uh, system in uk that nhs and also we studied about the family doctor system in cuba and we have a very good discussion here with the experts and scientists and doctors and we framed a project for family health center we instituted what is the family health center infrastructure should be improved and also the practices also should be improved so what But, kind of more facilities would one be getting at this family center then yes one is that the time of the service we extended from 2 to 6 also throughout the day the poor people are getting the service of the family doctor in the panchayat level and also it become people friendly when you enter into a primary health family health center there is a very good garden grass court etc in front of the hospital and very good lovely atmosphere and when you if you enter inside the hospital there is a very good reception with airport chairs and tv and, uh, and some drinking water uh, kiosk there and also modern toilets etc very good observation room and doctors room is also spacious and immunization room a very, very attractive one with paintings throughout the th on the walls uh, to be, uh, make it uh, children friendly there is a best breastfeeding cabin for the mothers who are coming there uh, for breastfeeding facility we are arranging uh, the, a very good uh, breastfeeding room that and total change of it people were very happy to see it very people friendly atmosphere not only yeah. that we started some new clinics we started swas clinic in every family health center it is especially for checking copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that was rampant in our country nowadays and we if we examine uh, in the grassroots level we can prevent the Uh, most of the respiratory issues from the beginning itself we are checking that and there is depression clinic also ashwas clinic okay. it is for that's a part of this uh, family clinics huh? part of a uh, family clinics yes okay yes they are, they were getting the people were getting this thing. Uh, the depression and uh, that kind of mental uh, uh, illness was the in our society and uh, we are examining uh, to make them uh, mentally uh, healthy not only physical health but also mental health we are listening to that and uh, from the family health center itself they are getting counseling etc and we are uh, uh, improving inspiring them to uh, have the some exercise because of this new lifestyle the lifestyle diseases are rampant in kerala i think okay. you know that kerala is known as the diabetic capital of india 
Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm on. Okay, ma'am. Come back to if you like, you know, if we are talking about COVID, uh, yes. like, you know, how far, you know, the Kerala is one state that has uh, actually used technology in, you know, tracing people, and you know, during the state's entire fight against COVID nineteen or co- coronavirus, you have used uh, technology. Uh, would you please uh, be able to tell us something about that? You know, how far it has helped you? Yes, uh, I think. Uh, uh the most important thing is the planning and preparedness and because of this uh, very good health system and this uh, uh, effective uh, uh, this system and our uh, workers from doctors to grassroots level asha workers it is easy to organize not very easy but we are organizing them to according to our planning mm-hmm. and the preparedness is the most important thing when we heard that some novel virus is spreading in china wuhan and we started our planning here we anticipated that that virus will come to kerala definitely because the, so many malayalis are there in wuhan and we started our planning here even january itself i think you know that january 18 who declared that a potential virus is there in china wuhan and the time it uh, doesn't become the pandemic or who didn't declare it as pandemic but we heard when we heard about the novel virus a new kind of virus in the sars family corona family at once we started to discuss about that me and my health secretary and my team all of a sudden have a meeting and discussed about this new kind of virus and we started our planning here right. january 24th we had a very good meeting of our rapid response team and discussed about this virus january 24th we had our uh, control room here we constituted we opened our control room in state level and we informed all the 14 districts district medical officers dmos we make them aware of this new virus and we passed the message to them they also started district level control rooms each control rooms we have 18 expert groups as you mentioned earlier in your presentation every additional dhs and other higher officials have one or two duties one is responsible for uh, contact tracing other is responsible for making isolation rooms and covid hospitals and someone are in duty of the logistic collection and even mental health itself we formed some teams here expert teams here they started working as we expected the corona virus came from wuhan to kerala that is the end of january january 30th we got the first positive case and february first week we got other two positive cases but when we tested the sample when we when they tested positive all the three students were in our isolation ward in hospital that is our that was our success because no contact occurred no transfer of this virus transmission of this virus occurred from them and we yielded a very good result after that february last again people are people were coming from other countries at that time the virus spread all over the world italy uk usa everywhere and people started to coming back from these countries to kerala but our surveillance team was there in the airport we didn't withdraw that surveillance team they were in the airport and they were examining all the people who were coming back our strategy is trace quarantine test isolate and treat that right. was our that is our strategy ma'am your strategy was actually very successful in the f- first leg you know for like uh, in the presentation also we mentioned for a few days in may you had zero cases but then last two weeks you've had almost 900 cases you have had eight deaths so your doubling time has gone down what's happening now ma'am 
Yes, definitely. That that we expected earlier because uh, during the March April March twenty fourth the complete lockdown declared here in India and it continued and April also was the lockdown period at that time everything stopped every travel stopped no one was coming at that time from abroad or from other states of India and we got some positive cases from who were returned at that time from other countries and we were dealing with that positive cases we are strictly watching whether they are obeying quarantine or whether they are jumping and uh, we got them in a nutshell and we are watching thoroughly uh, them and at that time no new cases come came from outside but the situation changed when the lockdown lifted when the air travel reinstated restarted and the surface travel also restarted people again started to coming back from other countries and also from india southern part surely we expected that because we planned for that also we expected more people will come from outside and more positive cases will occur definitely there will be a second wave we thought like that as we expected the people who returned from abroad and also from other states of kerala there are so many positive cases in them virus carriers and we are examining them we are tracing them in the airport itself not only the airport they are coming by water in the seaport also we have very good tracing team and also in by road they are coming and there where our check post the and railway stations also 15 or 20 dust were the teams were the to trace the people who were coming them more than 1 lakh 50000 people returned this returned this time from other places from gulf countries from uae and from other gulf countries a number of people who returned was positive we checked we tested positive and also from chennai maharashtra the most positive cases we got was from maharashtra people who returned from maharashtra mumbai and the second most positive cases were from chennai and from gujarat also they are returning they were positive not only they are become positive but also their condition some of the uh, uh, the people who returned back from these uh, epic centers their health condition was very bad when they reached here they were in a pathetic condition a woman who returned from mumbai to kerala by car reached here that moment she admitted she didn't go back to the quarantine uh, or hospital or quarantine uh, 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 place or in, in 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 her family but directly she was admitted in the hospital because she was so sick and when when she entered the hospital at that moment she died that was the condition that is the condition of the people who are returning from other places that is why our positive cases are increasing and also deaths are also increasing how Even stretched are your health systems right now ma'am as these migrants come back in such large numbers are you facing you know are your systems being tested are you are you like at 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 the end of your capacity that sort of situation has it been arrived at yet yes we planned for handling this kind of uh, severe situation this is uh, this is definitely this is challenging but we have plan a plan b plan c etc in plan a we have three covid hospitals in every districts and uh, i think uh, more than 1500 beds uh, for the covid patients in that hospital especially for covid and in our plan b we have more hospitals we 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 are changing the hospitals to covid hospitals and 5000 or uh, up to 10000 we can handle in the second stage also and in our plan c we are arranging some hotels hostels and some auditoriums for covid patients and uh, that is under our consideration 
and uh, we have a very good list of the institutions and also we are uh, collecting or uh, listing the human resource also not only in government sector but also in the private sector we have a very good list of uh, medical resource human resource and we are giving training to them to handle the situation if any situation like the this much of patients uh, occur positive cases occur has it so far ma'am has it gone beyond what you have expected pradeshil appuram poya idvare no 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 it uh, didn't go beyond the expect beyond our expectation because we expect uh, that if 1000 uh, 1 lakh 50000 people come uh, we can, everyone can expect 5000 or something <laughs> will be the positive number but yet it uh, doesn't cross 1000 uh, it will uh, definitely it will cross because people are coming again and again six mm-hmm. lakh people were registered in our portal to uh, enter kerala to come back kerala and out of that we will get a good number of positive cases that is not a problem the problem is that if the people who become positive they are not obeying our uh, quarantine principles the contact will occur human to human transmission will occur if one can transmit uh, this uh, virus to four people and that from there it will become 40 and that from there it will become 1000 or 600 or become any number that will go like a progression or like an atomic chain reaction it will grow it may go are, we, are you ma'am are you really on the brink of community transmission as the chief minister had mentioned we cannot say that community transmission will not occur but now there is no community transmission in kerala because we are eagerly examining everything if we got a case from outside outside the contact or outside the import case we are thoroughly watching and tracing the contact from where it occurred from where the pa- patient got the virus how it- we, we are getting some links from where the person got the virus and that way, and we are doing the sentinel surveillance test also we have already conducted more than 15000 sentinel surveillance test and out of that only a few few positive cases very uh, little number positive cases we got out of them and that number also we found some relationship with the positive cases or some contact uh, some history of travel etc that is why we are saying community spread doesn't occur and also we are testing the peripheral pneumonia cases and peripheral pneumonia cases decrease this time not increase there, there is no increase in the peripheral pneumonia cases also and also we collect some augmented sample from all part of the society at a time 3000 etc out of that also we didn't get more positive cases it uh, that shows that the virus didn't enter the community or community spread doesn't occur here but tomorrow if the quarantining uh, become a uh, failure uh, we didn't think so but if it happen anyway then community spread definitely will occur ma'am how important is testing you know are you do you think that i uh, the, is kerala testing enough yes testing is the most important thing but we are not following the slogan test 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 nothing else we are testing in a strategic way you know our most important thing is tracing first and testing the symptomatic cases first and the other who have travel history or some contact history we are properly quarantining them and if any symptoms occur from the quarantine period we are shifting the patients to hospital and again we are taking the swabs and testing but we should be very thorough that the quarantine is scientific and we are watching with the help of local self government with the help of anganwadi workers and helpers with the help of asha workers 
we are watching the people in their house keeping in contact with them with by telephone and also going to the doorsteps we are examining whether the person is keeping in contact quarantine or jumping quarantine and we are enquiring their health conditions also whether they have any sore throat or uh, fever or anything like that we are enquiring each and every day every day we are calling and finding out whether they have any symptoms at once we are shifting that person not in the private vehicle but we are sending our ambulance to that house and shifting that person to our hospital and taking samples and testing that is the method of our test now we tested more than 75000 samples out of that we got only uh, below 1500 cases you know that is our testing method we are continuing that and we are slowly increasing the test little more because send in the surveillance is the most important thing when the new cases are coming new people are coming from outside from the epic centers we have to increase the test among the high risk contact and also the secondary contact we are testing the high risk and secondary contact random testing is also the pool testing is the and single surveillance testing is the now we are increasing our testing but testing everybody that is not necessary that will finish our uh, testing kits etc that will exhaust everything and after that we should have to cry that because we cannot test the proper cases at that time that happened in some countries i think in italy and the usa they used all test kits in the first part and they finished it they have no proper strategy for testing at that time only one slogan test 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 <laughs> that cannot be a good method and we are testing according to our strategy we think that is a scientific strategy ma'am how did your experience of tackling nipa help you in covid definitely every challenge is an experience to us and in that nipa period as you know that is a newly emerging synopsis no medicine or vaccine and we really afraid hearing that virus is nipa when we enquired all over the world only four or five places nipa occurred only four or five places in the world malaysia singapore tiliguri etc and uh, we find out what they were doing at that time but we didn't get proper protocol out of that then we find out what is what happened in the ebola period what is its protocol we framed our own protocol basing that things uh, here that experience here and we have a very good protocol and also standard standard operating procedure and our way of action from that incident we came to know what is the goodness of the contact tracing we started contact tracing at that time and we have we had a very good team for contact tracing we built a team for that trained them this time also when the covid-19 virus occurred we implemented that thing here our experience contact tracing that is the most important thing we have some health workers we are calling them our cids in that way they are tracing contacts visiting the places and finding out whether they have any contact with the positive cases and that nipa experience and also the collective work that also gave a good result in the nipa period that also we started this time also the collective work giving some responsibility to our officers and checking whether they are doing in a proper way and every day having a discussion and analysis on that every day we are giving new remedial measures we are adding new things in our work and we are briefing to the society everything it is very transparent if any death occur we are saying is yes, today there is a death out of corona virus we are uh, testing even the unnatural deaths also if any case of 
a cold or fever or like that we are checking them whether they have corona or not and we are revealing that things to the society we tested this much people today out of this this much positive cases and also today there is one death and the what is the condition of the patient the one thing we should have to note that all the death 11 death occurred here and all that death is because of severe comorbidity every patient and uh, only three were below 50 years all the others were above 65 years ma'am uh, this you know one issue which everybody talks about when it comes to covid uh, is that the social stigma so like uh, do you think that have you come across that in the state you know uh, has it been an issue before you to get rid of this social stigma this uh, the virus or the disease has yes we are working hard for that our is a literacy literate society our literacy is 100 percent but yet there is some stigma in the minds of people that they are uh, afraid of this disease and uh, they want to uh, isolate uh, everyone suspecting and we are trying to reduce the social stigma we are giving very good advertisements and also we are calling the people in telephone and we are uh, teaching them what is this virus how is it spreading and after the after when we cured the virus nothing uh, in the in the uh, after afterwards and they are similar to other people and uh, no need to worry about the virus more but we should have been uh, we should have to be very cautious about these thing and we are asking them to keep social distance physical distance because this virus is spreading through contact and we have a very good campaign on break the chain sms campaign that is use soap or sanitizer or to hand hygiene is the most important thing and also to wear mask everyone should wear mask when they go outside and also keeping the physical distance no need to have stigma out of this and we are giving counseling to the poor people who become positive they are very very worried Uh, out of that we are calling them uh, occasionally and giving uh, mental strength to them ma'am uh, if you were the if if you were the health minister of maharashtra what are the three things you would do immediately we cannot compare like that you know in But, kerala yeah. over the years we are building these things here mm. because of some decentralized planning i am from a left party and i can say that left thinking thinking were here in kerala and proper planning out of that and the others also when the government changes they are not stopping each and everything they are also continuing this kind of uh, planning and uh, other things and in maharashtra i cannot say uh, we were friends maharashtra health minister and me maharashtra health minister called me and we have a very good conversation up to 40 minutes and he asked me madam uh, what are you doing in the slums here in dharavi we are afraid of this nipah virus what are you doing in the slums i said that sir here we have no slums like dharavi we have uh, some streets or uh, uh, poor people's uh, uh, places in uh, big cities small houses and small apartments and it is not like dharavi they have ration cards and they have identities and they are living as their own they are uh, working and uh, like that thing and if anyone is sleeping in the street or government is picking them up and is providing houses through our life mission nowadays and we are uh, solving that problem like that the most important uh, problem or most severe problem of urbanization is the slum formation dharavi and delhi there are slums and thousands of lakhs of people are living there they have no proper ration cards they are i think they are not in our population register most of them they are very poor people and if the virus enter to that dharavi 
it is too difficult to control it and i cannot blame the uh, who are governing uh, the this time but it should be a continuous process from independence day itself we should have to try to reduce the slums to give few cents of lands or uh, good residing places houses for the poor people long years passed devi and it is not the time now to think about that here uh, in kerala over the years we are building this kind of social security measures so if i am a minister in maharashtra i cannot do these things there because there is no base for that ma'am uh, okay you must be watching what is the national situation also like how do you see the pandemic now panning out in india at the national level yes national level our government is trying hard to tackle the problem taking every measures that is why they declared the lockdown <laughs> and each and every stage uh, prime minister conducted twice the video conference with us our chief minister and me participated in that they are also thinking about the break the chain campaign and they are also discussing about the contact tracing and uh, treating etc testing treating etc they are trying hard but but in some states it is increasing in tamil nadu chennai it is increasing and also in mumbai uh, it is there is a hike there in positive cases and also in deaths but uh, all the uh, state governments are try, trying their best to control this dangerous virus they are trustlessly they are doing that but in some place it is increasing we have to do more one thing i want to mention that the virus load in our country is we can say it is in 13 or 14 municipalities or big cities if we block that cities or if we lock down that places properly we can save the other places also but locking down doesn't means abandoning that place if we lock down a place if we close a place we should have to supply proper food medicine and all the essentials for the poor people at that place if we can do that i think we can diminish the spreading of the virus but it is a difficult thing i am not saying it is easy here in kerala we are making the containment zones if there are, there are some positive cases in a village we are declaring that as a containment zone and we are not allowing entrance or exit from that village but we are providing foods and all the other essentials to that village through our volunteers we have to lakh and 50000 sanadham volunteers especially for this corona uh, 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 working and uh, we are supplying foods and other things in that village through these volunteers that is the method that is the only method to uh, to prevent the spreading of the virus we cannot prevent the virus completely but we can slow down we can flatten the graph once in kerala in the first phase we flattened the graph and our mortality rate also was less next time this time it is again rising and again we are trying to flatten the graph that is our aim and the death because of these new coming people who have high virus load in them and also so many comorbidities we are trying our best but we can we, uh, it is not able to possible to save the poor people when they become so sick from the first day itself when they reach here uh they were in a sick condition that is the dangerous thing but anyway we are trying to reduce the mortality and also we are trying to flattening the curve we are enthusiastic in that because the first part we worked well and same principle we are implementing in the second phase also we are enthusiastic in our plan 
Um, and one last question before we open up for audience uh, questions. Uh, how important at this stage of the pandemic do you think is our antibody tests? Do we need to return to them soon? We tried to do some antibody tests. Unfortunately, we didn't get proper antibody kits. ICMR supplied some kits. And when we validated it, it, is, it was not good. And ICMR also uh, ordered that uh, or uh, give an instruction that don't use that kit, it is not good. And we discarded that kit. Again, we quoted for some company. We expected we get some uh, antibody kit from some companies. And uh, when we plotted a quotation, some quoted. And uh, uh, they, from the L1, we started to buy some kits. The first batch we validated, and uh, that was not good. And the second batch, we got some kits out of that. Now we are starting the antibody test also. But antibodies that itself will not give any results. There may be false positive or false negative. If a test becomes positive in an antibody test, we should have to confirm by a PCR test. But we are thinking to conduct antibody kit in mass to get some idea whether uh, in some places positive cases are occurring or not. Ma'am, I think uh, we can now take questions from the audience. So, Sunny Pratap. Very good evening to uh, Selza, ma'am. Ma'am, ma I want to ask you two questions. First is that ke, what message you want to give to other stakeholders in combating the COVID-19? And second, is it a right time to bring a right to health for every people of the India? Yes, the first question. We have implemented these things, tracing and quarantine, testing, isolating, and treating the patients or the virus carriers properly. For that, we have to some strategy to block the places where become epic center of this virus and to do properly, nothing else. The most important thing was the break, chain breaking. And uh, people should have to uh, some health behaviors, some habits, some responsibilities to break the chain. All the people should obey the advisories of uh, our health system that uh, hand washing, wearing masks and keeping physical distance, etc. That we have to do for a long period, maybe up to five or six months or up to one year, etc. How long this virus left here is here. Up to that period, we have to do some behavioral changes to, uh, to contain this virus. That is the only method. Every, every individual is responsible. Every individual should show some responsible behavior. And our health is our responsibility. Everyone should think our health is our responsibility. My health is my response. That is the slogan here. My health is my responsibility. If anyone become a virus carrier, please don't try to give it to other person. And to keep quiet in quarantine place. Don't move outside. That is the most important thing. Everyone should be. So... His and the second part was health, right yes. to health. Yes, second part, we should have to invest more money to help. Our government should invest. In India, India government is also investing 1% of our GDP for health. We have to improve the public health system throughout India. We are in Kerala, we are doing that. But I think uh, in some part of India, in villages, there have no proper hospitals, no proper doctors, and other facilities in the villages. Poor village people, they have no accessible healthcare system there. That is the most important thing. Every country should uh, do that to build up a proper people centered, people oriented healthcare system, affordable treatment for the citizens in India. That is the only way to tackle this kind of problem, uh, problems.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मिलन मिलन मेहता मिलन या मैम कैन यू यू मी यस गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल मैम शैलेजा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई लाइक टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट केरला केरला इट्स बीइंग द फर्स्ट स्टेट टू इनकॉर्पोरेट आयुर्वेदा इन अ बिग वे फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ कोविड नाइनटीन एंड सेकेंडली बीइंग अ मुंबई आइट I specially thank for sparing hundred plus doctors and nurses to Mumbai. <laughs> We desperately need, you know. Okay, coming to my queries, uh, I would like to know what are the protocols you have followed in uh, implementing the Ayurveda system, and how is your experience so far? As we are uh, correlating the allopathy, Ayurveda, Siddha, and yoga, naturopathy, everything, homeo, everything. Uh, to the fight against uh, covid 19 we have a very good ayurveda system here we can say kerala is the ayurveda hub because there are some traditional values of ayurveda here vagbada came from sindh to malabar in the ancient day city saying so and he taught some families about the ayurveda medical system and they become Bagbada's disciples and that family is there in Kerala. Predecessors of that family was here, is here, and now we also is make use of Ayurveda for the prevention, mostly for the prevention. We are not treating the positive cases with Ayurveda system here, but we are giving medicines to prevention to make the people immunized. for immune immunity and for the preventive sector we are giving some very good ayurveda medicine they are giving a kit and in each and every village we started the ayurveda clinics especially for covid uh, the people who were in quarantine and also people who are living outside especially for the reverse quarantine we are uh, implementing reverse quarantine here the most vulnerable people the old ages Uh, we are uh, supplying some preventive medicines uh, ayurveda medicines for the old age people and that uh, i think definitely uh, that is working and our very good ayurveda uh, efficient doctors are here and eminent personalities are here they are working very much there are some projects called swasthya ayush gramam etc and we, they are implementing very good work here out of ayurveda okay uh, next is pallava bagla i am a son in law of kerala so a question comes to you from half a keralite uh, two quick questions to you ma'am one if you were the prime minister of india how would you implement the covid 19 strategy for the country and second yeah. question second question ma'am uh, yes See, I am I am essentially a science and technology reporter. So, as the health minister of Kerala, do you get a frustration that there are no solutions coming from vaccines or drugs for handling coronavirus infections? Thank you. Yes, uh, everyone have these frustrations and uh, anxieties because. we are eagerly waiting for a vaccination you know every day we are reading uh, everything which coming in newspapers and uh, medias and even lancet uh, journals etc whether any good news from any part of the world so many experiments are going on as a science teacher i am sure that one day they will find out a very good vaccine against this deadly virus definitely and the experiments are going on let us wait for that the first question there is no need to answer <laughs> okay heman nanavati yes i part of my uh, earlier question you answered so i'm going to build on that a little bit uh, one thing is when india in mid march india was testing around 90 per day when our capacity was 8000 per day today we are testing 1 lakh and more per day and detecting 7000 per day it is not as if more people are being affected it is that more people are just being detected so there is a problem uh, and there is a trust deficit in the 
community has to just because someone is not detected as covid 19 does not mean that person is not covid 19 and the problem comes from the doctors who are refusing to test uh, or, or treat patients uh, just because they're afraid of the patient might be COVID positive, just not detected. And that problem uh, is severe because all over India, every day, from all causes together, we lose more than 28,000 uh, people die from all causes every day. So there are a lot more causes other than COVID-19 and the trust deficit because of the inadequate testing done so far is affecting our treatment of uh, other diseases and other causes of death. So how would uh, Kerala uh, deal with it and how, what would you suggest that we should be working at it at a national level on this matter? Yes, sir. I think uh, increasing the number of tests itself doesn't uh, give any results. But test is the most important part, you know. Uh, uh, we are uh, considering that if in 10 lakhs, out of 10 lakhs, what is the number of positive cases? Positive cases out of 10 lakhs and the, what is the number of tests out of 10 lakhs? That is the, uh, the uh, uh, that, that measure we should have to use. In Kerala, positive cases out of 10 lakhs and the test out of 10 lakhs is 65 times more than the positive cases out of 10 lakhs. That is so sufficient. And I am not saying completely sufficient, but we have to increase. But that's a good number out of 10 lakhs, test per million and test per million. The uh, case per million and test per million. Our test per million is 65 times more than the case per million. And in some states, it is below 20. And uh, but, but test number are so high. Uh, that is the thing. And if, if we have a very good strategy for testing, no need to worry. Not only testing, we should listen each and every part of the society. We are measuring the cases in the peripheral pneumonia, etc. In each and every primary care center should report. What is the situation there? Is fever cases are increasing. Every day they are reporting. And any pneumonia case, any symptoms of uh, this corona or other things, we are examining thoroughly. And non-COVID issues also are there. There are dengue fever, H1N1, leptospirosis. We cannot uh, uh, deny them or uh, we have to listen that thing also. We are working. We have now, we appoint a, uh, a, a, another DF, DSO, district surveillance officer. We, had, we have one district surveillance officer in each and every district. In this corona period, we appointed another DSO to look on these non-corona cases and they are also working for that and we should have to listen everything there are so many dialysis patients there they are there are so many cancer patients whether they are getting proper medicine or treatment we should have to examine that also we have some mobile uh, dispensaries they are going to uh, check the ncd uh, people whether they are getting treatment and if uh, anyone is there uh, who are not getting dialysis, etc. At once we are taking them to our hospitals. And we have very good uh, trauma care system here. And BLS ambulance, 315 BLS ambulance, other than the other ambulance. And our ambulances are ready to take that uh, patients to hospital, any patient. And to that kind of surveillance, uh, that is the method. Uh, the, so that uh, only test, that is not a good method, but that should be there and other proper activities should also be there. Okay. This is Joseph Maliakin. Are you there? Yeah, ma'am, uh, I have uh, three questions. Number one, that uh, many experts have predicted that the worst is not over for India. June and July are going to find a huge spike in COVID cases. Do you think Kerala will be also part of that uh, uh, spike? And how are you going to deal with it? Number two, you mentioned a lot about the public uh, health care system in Kerala. That we appreciate. 
but how do you then explain the phenomenal growth of private sector uh, in the health sector in kerala over the last say two or three decades and uh, third a uh, slightly political question that there have been many uh, criticisms about the behavior of china in with reference to covid 19 and what is your view on that thank you mm. yes they for the first thing it is not a declaration for uh, any one place or uh, throughout india we should have to expect the second hike or second wave of this virus scientists are saying that uh, there will be a second rise uh in june july etc we cannot uh, predict this ki uh, kind of things fully but uh, we should have to expect that this virus is like that um and kerala uh, should also uh, ready to tackle this problem at that time now we are teaching people that the virus is not going and it is not the end it will stay here we have to live with the virus we have to uh change our behaviors and our systems to live with the virus that is that is not easy but we are teaching people to live with the virus maybe in june july there will be another hike in the virus infection and the second thing what is the second question uh The private hospital. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Private hospitals. Definitely. Uh, here, the private hospitals are rampant in Kerala. Private health system, but we are going hand in hand. We have some apprehensions, and uh, we want to control in some uh, issues. We have a very good clinical establishment act. We pass through the act also. They have to register under the act, and some. rules and regulation should be the but uh, there is a complaint that in private hospitals the poor cannot afford the it is not affordable treatment is not affordable but in kerala a percentage of the community is rich they can go to the private hospitals and they can seek health care from the and now in front of a pandemic or when an enemy came like this we are hand in hand and we are tackling the problem together they are helping us the private sector and uh, we are not opposing the private system but we are supplying affordable treatment to the poor and middle class people all the people we are uh, attracting them to the public sector now in the uh, corona period we are giving free treatment to each and everybody without any discrimination of financial position we are giving free treatment they are coming in our hospital the positive patients are admitted in government hospitals not in private hospitals a few people were in some private hospitals but 99% 99.5% they are in our government hospitals and we are giving free treatment to each and every patients and private hospitals are helping us for the non covid treatment they are conducting some some telemedicine system and also some mobile system etc in that way under the leadership of ima and other organizations they are helping and uh, we are they are we are working together to tackle this kind of problem and what is the last question about china ah uh, about china i can't say anything about china because i only knew that a kind of virus occurred there viruses are here and there the university no not in, not only in china the nipah virus occurred first in malaysia sungai nipah that place and the virus found from sungai nipah that virus got that name nipah virus and this time this virus occurred in china that another time we cannot predict what is the other virus and where it occurs viruses are there in the universe but sometimes it become uh, disturbed or like that and uh, that began to multiply and uh, from this uh, uh, some uh, animals or uh, birds they will transfer to 
transmit to human body and human to human transmission is also occurring and we can only think how to contain these things how to uh, contain the uh, virus spreading etc i don't know what china is doing and uh, i'm not aware of that shelu shrinivasan 13% of your population is elderly in kerala yes we would like to know of yes. all the covid detected cases what percentage of senior citizens and number 2 where any special measures undertaken to protect senior citizens apart from the usual face mask uh, sanitizer using social distancing any other special uh, advice you can give to protect senior citizens thank you our life expectancy is uh, more than 76 years 74 to 76 to women and men and that is a good sign so that we have 14% old age population here and uh, now we have to listen to that part because they are so vulnerable to these diseases because of that we started reverse quarantine system here means the old age people should not move outside or the if a, if we want to quarantine anybody who come who is coming from outside we are not allowing to mingle or we are not allowing them in the houses where there is old age people if it is a big house and a separate room a separate bathroom toilet etc now we are insisting strict room quarantine don't move outside and don't try to meet the old age people and by phone call we are insisting the old age people also don't try to keep contact with the outsiders that uh, and also our anganwadi workers and helpers got training and we give training to them and our kudumbasri workers also they are calling the old age people we have a very good list in each and every panchayat who and who were the old age people and we are calling them each and every day and insisting them uh, to keep away from the virus and if they have any problem any health problem they are addressing and they, if they want to go to hospital we are taking to taking them to hospital if we are not able to move outside doctors are going to their houses and examining them and we are giving everything we giving every attention to the old age people and we are supplying the non communicable disease medicine ncd medicine medicine for diabetes and also for uh, hypertension we are giving <coughs> the medicine to the doorsteps uh, up to one month we supplied first and then this month also we are supplying and uh, they are uh, they are making them happy out of this we are protecting them properly we are watching them properly that is the reverse quarantine and through that method we are making it sure that uh, they were not exposed to this deadly virus and the positive cases we got here the positive cases were above 70% uh, was uh, above 60 or 50 we can say uh, and above 60 there is 60% like that and uh, out of the deaths 90 6% are old age people above 60 uh, that is the condition here miss preeksha malhotra uh, hi am yes. i audible yes yes please go Uh, hi, good evening, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, when we're discussing uh, Kerala's model of combating COVID, uh, another parameter that comes to mind, which in which uh, the world uh, uh, in India we can learn from uh, Kerala, is the literacy level of Kerala. So, I wanted to know that has the literacy level, the high literacy level of your state, helped you in any way to combat uh, COVID nineteen? Definitely, they. literacy level helped us very much it is easy to convey the messages to people and our break the chain campaign also uh, it was so good and people 
uh, were uh, very prone to that kind of activities because of their literacy level. We have totally total literacy mission in Kerala, and our literacy rate become high. It's hundred percent. We can say so. And also, women literacy rate is also very high. And it is easy to have the IEC activities, and people are uh, getting our messages easily uh, because of that. They are thinking the health is the responsibility, and that is the thing here. Mr. Vijay Shivjal Patel. Yeah. Uh, first of all, my congratulations to Madam Shailesha and their government for excellent handling of the COVID situation. I agree with her when she says that the long, uh, in the long term, most states should invest in a robust infrastructure system like Kerala. Uh, my question is: uh, the state of Assam, which also has roughly the same population of uh, Kerala, but not so robust infrastructure system, also had similar number of cases, and they also tested almost the similar number of people. They were also effectively able to handle the situation. So, Shailesha, Madam, as an expert on public health. what do you think that helped them to uh, overcome this situation and can their approach uh, be helpful to other states which also do not have such a good infra health infrastructure uh, first of all i want to congratulate uh, assam uh, brothers and sisters and they are uh, i think they are also doing a good job there and according to infrastructure i think tamil nadu is also very good infrastructure is the very good public health system is there in tamil nadu and karnataka also uh, and uh, uh, some of the states are uh, making a good thing uh, uh, about the infrastructure uh, well very good infrastructure but some northern states have no such infrastructures in village level they have very good uh, medical colleges and uh, reputed uh, colleges and research centers in uh, north in some states but i think uh, the infrastructures in, in the ground level that is not satisfactory and uh, with the help of this uh, very good infrastructure everyone should try to do some scientific work some strategic work then only we can contain this virus mr deepak chibba yeah i'm here please yeah go ahead yeah honorable minister i think in uh, passing you had mentioned that kerala has used about 2 and a half lakh volunteers mainly in the containment zones my question was to do with how has kerala enrolled volunteers in handling covid and in this uh, question i would like to get your views on volunteers with medical and healthcare skills uh, like doctors nurses technicians ambulance drivers as well as volunteers with other skills to help provide food essentials transport to the higher risk citizens like senior citizens or those who are under home isolation did you create a database and has this database been uh, useful in targeting specific use of such volunteers as above in a particular situation thank you definitely our uh, chief minister is reading in front and uh, he announced several scientific methods and pro, uh, programs uh, to tackle this virus and out of which there are so many social welfare schemes etc like community kitchens and supplying food to all uh, and uh, giving shelters to the uh, people who have no other shelter properly <coughs> he is announcing so many he announced so many schemes like that and he also give a call Uh, to the people uh, are you ready to uh, uh, become volunteer uh, to work with the virus tackling program and uh, through the uh, he asked uh, them to uh, ensure or uh, register in through the online system we have a very good software uh, for that sannadham sannadham means uh, they are ready to work and are they ready to work and in that portal more than 3 lakhs people registered and uh, youths are there some organizations are there not only youths so many people women and men the male and female registered in that and we divided it according to the district and according to the panchayat level 
and we we are giving training we gave training to them and uh, we uh, engaged uh, them or we put them in different duties somewhere uh, others to do take duty in community kitchen and some volunteers to the house visiting keeping the physical distance they are visiting the house where the people were quarantined or where there was quarantined people and uh, we gave good trainings to the volunteers what and what they have to do uh, during their visits or work that way we are working and very good results out of that people are serving definitely they are serving their state serving their uh, brothers and sisters that is a very good thing and our uh, uh, all others the, uh, who are working the government servants doctors nurses paramedical staffs and uh, asha workers they are working according to the department's suggestion and also the policemen the policemen are also visiting the houses to watch whether the people are being quarantined and uh, we are um, uh, coordinating all these things every day we have a meeting uh, higher officials and uh, cm is calling meeting and discussing that day's work and every evening cm is conducting press meet to brief these things to the media and through the media to the uh, people to all the citizens and we are doing in that systematic way and without any discrimination of uh, anything the youth and uh, uh, the uh, people are coming as volunteers uh, to work against the to fight against this deadly virus right ma'am um, that brings us uh, to the end of this very interesting session uh thank you so much ma'am for taking the time out from your busy schedule uh thank you to our audience for your questions for your participation and thank you to our partners our presenting partner federal bank and our associate partner the arya with vaidyashala kotakkal thank you to all of you thank you thank, thank you ma'am you. i want to say one thing uh it is not the time to rest in kerala also uh, we are eagerly looking whether it is increasing or not and we are trying best to uh, flatten the curve now it is increasing and we are waiting how much people are coming more people are coming from it is not easy it is not a easy job but anyway uh, we have enthusiasm in our people i have enthusiasm with my coworkers my doctors and my staff they are the real heroes they are working uh, in front of the virus fighting directly uh, with the virus and uh, with their enthusiastic manner of working i hope that kerala can win again <laughs> the first part we have a victory and second part also i hope we can win again and thank you everybody to invite me for such a very good discussion and we all are doing the same thing in each and every part of the our country we are working i one thing also i have to mention kerala cannot stay as a watertight compartment you know if the virus is rampant in our neighbor state no need to contain this virus here it will come again and again and we have to tackle the problem throughout our country each and every state uh, i hope they Uh, gain a good result, and I wish them uh, all of our brothers and sisters in other states also. I wish a very good result uh, in their fighting. They are also fighting against the virus, and they should also win. That is the problem, and uh, I hope that they can also tackle this problem. And throughout India, we should have to tackle the problem, and uh, let us hope. our country will win against this deadly virus thank you ma'am all the thank best thank you ma'am all the best ma'am thank you thank you very much